Another great question this person is asking if there is any time in which intentional weight loss is not fat phobic. I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the times, if you are intentionally losing weight, it is fat phobic. I'm leaving that point little zero one percent in case I am truly, truly wrong, but I don't think I am. And here's the reason why. I'm not saying if you exercise and happen to lose weight that that is fat phobic. I'm not saying if you start a medication and you happen to lose weight, that is fat phobic. I am not saying that if you're going through any type of, you know, illness and that is altering your body in some way, that that is fat phobic. I'm saying when you are intentionally exercising to lose weight, altering your diet to lose weight, doing any activity intentionally to lose weight, is fat phobic. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Hey, where are the white women at? Hang on one sec, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. So she just said intentional weight loss is fat phobic, right? Stick with me for one minute, hear me out. Now, she looked like she could stand to lose a few elbows, just saying. Now, Say one morning she woke up and said, you know what, I am going to change my diet, eat healthy, start exercising, maybe walk a few miles a day so I can look and feel better and improve my physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional health because that's what eating healthy and exercise does. It improves generally every aspect of life. So if she decided to do that, that would be fat phobic? I'm, make it make sense. Well, you can't because it doesn't. I say again, you can't make sense of the nonsensical. Anyway, welcome back. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Now, I have a question for you guys. What is your opinion on this group, Drag Syndrome? Now, Drag Syndrome is four men who dress up as drag queens and perform around the world, and they have Down Syndrome. Now, I played a clip of these guys in a video a few months back in case you missed it. Where is my champagne? Where's my diamond? Where's my diamond ring? Where's my gin and tonic? Where's my martini? So there was five of them in that clip. There's only four pictured here, so they must have a couple reserves standing at the ready in case they need an extra person for a performance or something. I don't know. Anyway, so there's four of them pictured here with pop star they them Sam Smith. Now. This group, Drag Syndrome, has recently exploded in popularity as this whole drag queen movement has just kind of been thrust into the forefront of today's culture. I don't get it, but here we are. Um, so, listen, you guys know that I have a very childish, offensive, sometimes dark sense of humor. So, I could have taken this in several different directions, but I don't feel like getting in any trouble today. So, I just figured I would ask you guys the question. A lot of people say are saying that um, these four guys are being exploited. Um, this isn't right. Some people say they're having a blast. They're traveling the world. They're making money. So I just figured I would pose the question to you guys. Do you think this is exploitation? Do you think this is harmless fun? What do you think? Because, as I said, I'm not getting in any trouble today. This is getting out of hand. Now, there are a lot of people out there that aren't too happy with that whole thing. And they're saying these guys are being exploited and just to leave them alone. They don't have the capacity to understand what's going on. Then let me play the devil's advocate for a minute. Hear me out. What if each one of those gentlemen in the group drag syndrome have solid people in their corner who are making for absolute certain they're not being exploited. They're not being harmed in any way. They're having a good time. Who am I to say anything, right? I mean, there are Down syndrome people out there that have their own apartments, that have their own jobs. So if these people have someone in their lives that are making sure, as I said, for absolute certain, no one's exploiting them, no one's harming them in any way, and they're out there living life and having fun, why would I have a problem with that, right? I mean, just saying, just some, throwing some ideas around. Like I said, I'm not getting in trouble today. So 
All right, let's uh, meet Aurora. She, they, call to action. Roll the film. Hello, TikTok. My name is Aurora. I am a trans woman, pronouns she, they, and I am 23. This is the first video on this platform that I intend will stay up, and it is a call to action to my cis followers, my trans followers. For the longest time, I have not felt comfortable posting on this app. I figured for a trans woman that I had transitioned too late in life, that I was not feminine enough, not passing enough, not the correct body type to speak on our issues, to have a voice. But I have stopped caring. I have stopped caring. You f***ing crazy man. You sound insane. Do you realize that? You should be medicated. Now, I couldn't play the rest of that clip because these people are getting very bold with their calls to action. And speaking of that, so this fella on the screen here, he recently made a TikTok that uh, it's not good. It's not good at all. It's going viral on the interwebs. It's all over Twitter. And uh, it's very alarming to say the least. Now, if you want to hear what the guy said, I think Tim Pool made a video about it earlier this afternoon. Or like I said, you can go find it on on Twitter or wherever. Um, this isn't that same TikTok, but it's the same guy, just to give you an idea on who this person is. So this woman commented on this TikTok, you're a joke, you're the one that's jealous, you wish you could be what I am naturally. His response, roll the film. Cis women see me as the best of both worlds. Men chase after me, hence the term chaser. Uh, I have married men who slide into my DMs. I have men with girlfriends who slide into my DMs because they secretly want something that you can't give them. But I can. But I'm a lesbian. I have four girlfriends. I'm in my own home. So no, I'm not jealous. Stay mad. What the f Buffalo Bill? So that self-described lesbian seems fairly stable, right? Not unhinged in any way. <laughs> I'm telling you, where do you guys see the uh, TikTok that's going viral that has caused that fellow some serious controversy? Wow. Anyway, um, these next couple of clips here, these, um, if you haven't gotten your kids out of public schools yet, I think this will be the final straw for you to pull them out of there. Roll the film. How do you feel about LGBTQ pushing their agenda on the youth? There is no agenda. You're, you are speaking to the LGBT. I feel as though that's great. I feel as though, I feel as though <laughs> every child should be gay. Yeah, I think every single child I'm actually Earth... gay and I'm studying to be a teacher right now and I'm going to make every child in my class gay. Scary gay, scary gay, scary gay. Stop! Now, as bad as that was, you might not think it was too bad. You may just say, well, they're not, they don't really mean that. They were just talking trash, trying to impress people, trying to get a rise out of the guy with the microphone. It gets worse. Oh, trust me, it gets a lot worse. Roll the film. I pride myself on being a teacher who's very open about her life. And one of the things I'm very open about is my sexuality. I have a trans flag, a bi flag, a non-binary flag, all on my desk at my work. But there's one thing I'm not open about, and it's being poly. And today that actually became something I had to worry about for the first time. See, the kids are interviewing us teachers as a part of learning how to write profiles on others. They'll soon be doing it with each other, but they're starting with the teachers so they can all work together on one subject. And one of the kids on Tuesday is going to ask me if I have a partner. And the answer is, yeah. And I have another one, too. And I don't know how to handle that conversation. Because while I know that the kids are more accepting of things like homosexuality, bisexuality, all of that, polyamory is not in the conversation. It's not something that is talked about. And I worry not only would this be something that might lead to rumors that I am cheating on my partner or that I am a swinger or something like that, but would also just totally derail the class. 
So the obvious answer, the one that I went to first, is I'm not going to talk about it. But that feels wrong, too. I don't like lying to my students. I don't like telling them falsehoods. And also, I don't feel comfortable answering the question by saying, yes, I have a partner, and having to pick which one I pick as the face for my relationship. What the f*** is wrong with you? Now, she could have done what teachers did back when I was in school and said, my personal life is none of your business. We didn't even know all of our teachers' first names for crying out loud. <laughs> anyway, before we go any further, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsors of today's video. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to let this video loop on the screen of this guy dressed up in his pup play kink mask with his little dolls on the shelf. And I always say, listen, if you're an adult, do whatever ever you want in the privacy of your own home, as long as you're not hurting anybody else. But if you want to film it and put it out there for the world to see, it's fair game, right? <laughs> anyway, today's video is being brought to us by first sponsor is the YouTube channel Patriots Live Here. Thank you, sir, for sponsoring another video. I truly appreciate the support. Now, Patriots Live Here is out there spreading the good word, trying to build this channel up a little bit. So after this video, if you want to go over there, check his videos out, maybe subscribe to his channel. I'm sure he would great, greatly appreciate that, and I will link that in the description box below. Second sponsor of today's video from Behind Enemy Lines, Kathy in Long Beach, California. I'm just kidding, Kathy. I don't. I know there's still some good parts of California left. I'm not sure about Long Beach, but um, Kathy, thank you so much. I truly, truly appreciate the love and support. Now, if you'd like to sponsor the next video and help support the channel, there is a PayPal link in the description box below, and I will say your full name as a sponsor of said video unless stated otherwise by you. Let's get this guy off the screen. What an idiot! Oh, what a loser! Alright guys, we're going to be wrapping it up on this one because I can't take any more, and I'm fairly certain you guys can't either. That's definitely enough brain aids for one day. Now, the past few videos, we have been wrapping it up with everybody's least favorite former Vice President Joe Biden. Today, we're going to wrap it up with former Vice President Joe Biden's Secretary of Transportation, who was hired solely on the fact that he likes to Literally, that's literally why he was hired for this job, because because he's gay. That, I'm not exaggerating. Anyway, he uh, he's constantly virtue signaling, and he, he here he's talking about how bridges are racist. I, I don't know. These people, they're all lunatics. They're off their rockers. Anyway, guys, things are clearly getting crazy out there, so please, please, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Till next time. Love you guys. Peace. Roll it. If an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or there would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by, that that obviously reflects racism that went into those design choices. No offense, but you are a stupid asshole. And you ain't black.